bifurcation. In other words, splitting the data lanes in half from 16 lanes to eight on your GPU. How much does that impact your gaming and other things that you could be doing that involve the GPU? And so I decided to take a look at it. So let's dig into it. I'll be right back. Once in a while, I'll get a question or a concern about bifurcation. And just to be clear, like I said in the intro, that's cutting the data lanes or PCIe lanes in half for your GPU, where the fear is that it would hurt the performance of that GPU on say, for instance, games or anything else that's GPU intensive. So I decided to take a look at that and see how much of an impact it really has when you bifurcate. So on this motherboard, this is a, a MSI X870E carbon motherboard. And on this particular motherboard, the main PCIe slot would bifurcate if you populate the second M.2 slot or the second PCIe slot, right? So if you had like two GPUs there, or if you had a video capture card in that second slot or uh, an SSD expansion card in there, you know, things like that, that could bifurcate the primary GPU slot. And like I said, the, the fear and the concern that some people have is that it's gonna hurt the performance of that GPU when you do so. So what we're using is we're gonna use three different GPUs. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of the 5090 nor the 9070 XT, uh, which at this point, I'm kind of glad I couldn't because, you know, 5090's got problems and 97 XT is, it, it doesn't have problems that I'm aware of at this point, but at the same time, I refuse to buy much higher than uh, MSRP on any GPU because that just encourages poor behavior, but that's for another video. Anyways, so what we're gonna use is uh, the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. We're gonna use the Zotac Gaming OC 4070, and then we're gonna use the 3060 Ti Founders Edition. Uh, I was gonna use uh, also the 2060 and the 1080 or the 1080 Ti, but you'll see as we go through these charts why I chose not to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those three GPUs and I'm gonna populate the top M.2 slot, which shouldn't bifurcate that PCIe lane or that PCIe slot and put each GPU on it and run it through some benchmarks, right? And then I'm gonna take that SSD and I'm gonna remove it and put it in the second M.2 slot, which should bifurcate the PCIe slot for the GPU. And then we're gonna run the exact same tests. So the components I'm gonna use is uh, the MSI X870E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. And the CPU is the 9800X3D. The RAM that I'm using is the G-Skill Z5 Neo Royal at 6,000 mega transfers, CL28. The SSD I'm using is the Crucial T705. CPU cooler is the Thermal Rate Peerless Assassin. And the power supply is the Rosewell 1200 watt, 80 plus gold. Right, so the first benchmark I did was for Cyberpunk 2077's benchmark tool. I had it at Ultra preset with the scaling off, no frame gen, no RT. For this and all the future charts, you'll see that I did the 16 lanes versus the eight lanes for each of the GPUs. As you can see at 1080p, we're at 226 frames on Cyberpunk for the 4090. At eight lanes, we're at 224. 1440p for 16 lanes, we're at 156 frames. Eight lanes, we're at 155. 4K, we're at 76 frames. 
for 16 lanes and eight lanes is 75. RTX 4070 at 1080p, we're at 119 frames for both 16 and eight lane performance. 1440p, we're at 70 for both. And then at, interestingly enough, we're at 28 frames a second for the 16 lane performance and 32 frames a second for the eight lane performance. So that was that was an interesting result there. For the 3060 Ti, we're the exact same performance for both 16 and eight lanes at all three settings. So 1080p is at 86 both times, 1440p is at 53 both times, and at 4K it's at 24 both times. For Red Dead 2's benchmark, I had an ultra preset with the scaling off, no frame gen, no RT. And as you can see, we've got similar results to Cyberpunk's results, meaning that they're fairly close on all the results. These, these are more run variances than anything. For the 4090 at 16 lanes at 1080p, we're at 160, same thing at eight lanes. At 1440p, 159 for both 16 and eight lanes. And at 4K, we're at 126 and 127 respectively, uh, which is more of a run variance than anything. Uh, for the 4070 at 1080p, 16 lanes, uh, 157. At eight lanes, we're at 155 frames. At 1440p, we're at 125 frames a second for 16 lanes and 124 frames a second for eight lanes. For the 4K results, we're at 79 each time. For the 3060 Ti, we're at 93 and 94 at 1080p. We're at 74 and 74 at 1440p. We're at 49 and 49 at 4K. So interesting results so far. And by the way, the, the 4090 results between the 1080 and 1440 results, the reason why they're uh, this close together is because my monitor capped out at 160 hertz because it's a 4K monitor, but its maximum performance is at 160 hertz. And so that's why it's stopping there. And that's why it looks so close. It's not. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we're probably, if I had to guess, somewhere up in up in or near the 200 frames a second marker for the 1080p results if we had that monitor to do so. And this is the exception. Red Dead 2 uh, does cap itself out in accordance with the monitor's performance, whereas the other benchmark tools uh, do not. So Black Myth Wukong benchmark uh, ultra preset, in other words, the very high preset. TR is set to minimum because you can't turn it off. Uh, no frame gen, no RT. The 4090 for the 16 lane results at 1080p is at 134. At eight lanes, it's at 132. Interestingly enough, uh, the 1440p results had a little bit more going for it as far as a difference goes. Not a huge amount, but enough to uh, take a look at. So we're at 16 lanes for the 4090 at 1440p. We got 116 average frames a second. Whereas at eight lanes, it went up to 123 frames, which is uh, probably close to about like a 6% difference, which is above what you would expect in a run variant scenario. So that was an interesting result on the eight lanes beating the 16 lane performance at 1440p. And then we're back to run variants at 4K at 109 and 107. And for the 4070, we have the exact same results across the board uh, for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. And for the 3060 Ti, uh, we're at 58 frames a second for 16 lanes. And for eight lanes, we're at 57 frames a second at 1080p. We've got the exact same results for 1440p between 16 and 8 lanes at 51. And at 4K, we've got the exact same results at 40 frames a second. 3D Mark Steel Nomad benchmark, the DX12 at 4K. 
And I, I could have probably reset the resolution for the monitor and rerun it, but I don't think we're gonna need to just by looking at these results. We don't have a whole lot of difference here. To be clear, the, the scores that they come up with is the equivalent of frames per second. If you move the decimal point two to the left, that's how many frames a second it becomes, right? So this is 91.6 frames a second. This is 92.2 frames a second. So we've got a 0.6 frames a second difference between the two scores. Similarly, we've got maybe like 1.2 frames a second of difference for the 4070. And then we've got about 0.6 frames a second of difference between the 16 and 8 lanes for the 3060 Ti. I use the Blender benchmark, uh, the 4.3.0 version. And so on monsters samples per minute for the 4090 at 16 lanes is 5505. And we've got 5546 for the eight lanes. So slightly outperforming the 16 lane performance by about 1%. Not a whole lot of difference there. Uh, I, I would suspect that these are more run variants kind of things than anything else, just like with the games on junk shop. We're at 2674 and 2690 between 16 and eight, eight lanes. And on classroom, we're at 2778 versus 2763. For the 4070 monster, we're at 2562 and 2573. For junk shop, we're at 1270 versus 1283. And for classroom, we're at 1354 versus 1358. And for the 3060 Ti, we're at 1294 and 1290 for the Monster, 826 and 825 for Junk Shop, 748 and 750 for Classroom. These are all essentially the same results. And for video exporting, I use the Shotcut Video Editor. Uh, I did export times for long and short videos. So I did a 20 minute video with some filters on there and a five minute video with the exact same filters on there. And so the export time for the 4090 Founders Edition between 16 and eight lanes at the 20 minute mark, we're at 10 minutes, 15 seconds versus 10 minutes, 17 seconds. And for the five minute video, we're at two minutes, 45 seconds versus two minutes, 39 seconds. For the 4070, we're at 11 minutes and 53 seconds for the 16 lanes. And a huge jump downwards. This might have been some kind of background program issue going on here. Uh, but yeah, that was the result I got was 11 minutes, 53 seconds versus 10 minutes and 21 seconds for the eight lanes performance. And for the five minute videos on the 4070, we're at two minutes, 34 seconds versus two minutes, 44 seconds. For the 3060 Ti for the 20 minute video, we're at the exact same results at 10 minutes, 20 seconds. And for the five minute video, we're at one second of difference at two minutes, 35 seconds for the 16 lane performance and two minutes, 34 seconds for the eight lanes performance. Then I did the Fermark benchmarks at 1080p, the 1440p and 4K. I used Fermark 2.4.3.0. For the 1080p results at 16 and 8 lanes for 1080p for the 4090, we're at 422 and 423. For 1440p, we're at 328 and 329. And for 4K, we're at 196 both times. For the 4070, we're at 210 both times at 1080p. We're at 157 versus 160 frames a second at 1440p. And we're at 70 frames a second at 4K for both results. For the 3060 Ti at 1080p, we're at 130 frames a second versus 131. At 1440p, we're at 99 versus 100. And at 4K, we're at 53 on um, both results at 4K. All right, so what does all that data tell us? Uh, that data tells us that it, it doesn't really impact performance, at least in the limited array of GPUs and the limited array of benchmarks that I did with all this stuff. Practically zero impact on performance. As a matter of fact, uh, there were, there's a few 
times as you saw where there was a little bit of an uptick in performance on the times that I had the PCIe slot for the GPU bifurcated. So yeah, it's it was interesting. Uh, I had expected at least like a 5% hit, maybe a 10% hit, uh, but yeah, it was zero impact. And so you can rest assured that at least with this stuff, with these components, and at least all the way down to the 3060 Ti probably on GPUs, that it's really not going to impact you for performance, whether it's gaming or creati creativity or productivity stuff. The only time you're going to worry about that is if it disables other components or slots, right? Uh, so there's motherboards out there where if, like, for instance, if you populated the second or third or even fourth M.2 slot, it might disable the second PCIe slot, right? So you just want to take a look at the specifications under slots and storage for that particular motherboard to make sure you know what you're dealing with before you buy that motherboard, right? And you'll be able to find that data on the manufacturer's website for that particular motherboard. You want to definitely take a look at that and make sure that you understand what you're dealing with, uh, specifically on the disabling features. Uh, apparently, we don't have to worry about the bifurcation uh, portion, at least not at this point. All right, so hope you enjoyed this video and the information I provided and hope to see you in the next one.